Captain, welcome to your voluntary, see also compulsory, night shift. Now, it's a little different from the news, but tonight you'll be working on one of our most popular fictional reality TV shows. I hear they're all the rage. Obviously, no one important has to do the graveyard shift, so I'll be clocking out now. I'll leave you in the capable hands of Diane. Toodaloo! Hi, Alex. Welcome to the live and spooky team. Tonight, we're broadcasting live from an old film studio which is haunted by the vengeful spirit of a woman found dead in the basement. You know, standard stuff. Just before we start, we don't do adverts here, but we do have some old film reels to play in. The projector is hooked into your advert buttons and will automatically select the correct reel for us. If you look down under the desk, you'll see what I mean. Alex, I don't know what you do on the news, but our show starts on time. Look down under the desk. All right, see yourself. Good luck with the ads. Bozeman did ask me to do a performance review, you know. Just remember to hit the ad button at the end of each segment to play the films. Oh, and that device on the right, that's the spirit jammer. It prevents any wayward or malicious spirits from interfering with the show. Honestly, Gareth knocked it up in his garage and I don't think it does anything. But he assures me it's set correctly, so just don't touch it, I guess. ...of the country's great buildings in Adrian's Architects. And let's not forget our late evening film tomorrow night, Schrodinger's Cravat. A tale of the forbidden love between a mathematician and a costumier set in the early 1800s. Not one to miss. That's just some of tomorrow's treats here on Channel One. But now, without further ado, it's time to turn out the lights. All right, Wayne, we're going live in five. As we pass the airwaves over to the paranormal. Are you receiving me, Wayne? Can you hear that? That is the sound of fate. Have you ever heard fate creep up behind you with a dagger in its back and a hallelujah on its lips? I have. Good evening, my friends, both in this realm and the next. Tonight we've come to a wretched place to uncover a dangerous case. Welcome to the Bannon Sound Stage. Once a thriving studio at the forefront of innovation until tragedy. A horrifying accident. A devastating fire and finally death itself. Join me, Wayne, the spirit whistle, spiritual medium, psychic communicator, lover, as I attempt to uncover the dark truth into grey and Infamous case show tonight on live and spooky. Features a very special guest, journalist, broadcaster, and all round truth seeker, Patrick Bannon. Good evening, Wayne. You excited to join us tonight? I'm excited, Wayne. I can't say I'm excited about all this stuff, though. It plays havoc with my allergies. Now, Patrick. Oh, what's that, love? Oh, my. My, Patrick. I'm hearing from the spirit world. I'm hearing something that might shake your world to its very foundation. Is it true that you are, in fact, the one and only son of Graham Bannon? 
Well, yeah, I mean, everyone knows that, yeah. <laughs> the EMF reading is off the charts. And, of course, we're joined, as usual, by our paranormal investigator and supernatural scientist, Dr Ahmed. Excuse me, Dr Ahmed, what is an EMF? Oh, <laughs> forgive me, Mr Bennon, I'm so sorry. Sometimes I forget that not everyone is as well versed in the terminology as myself and Mr Spirit Whistle here. So, EMF stands for Electric Magnetic Field. Essentially, it is a measurable energy signature given off by all forms of spectral phenomena. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that thing being off the charts, is that, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing for us? Well, I mean, higher tends to mean that there is either a stronger presence or even multiple presences. Mm. <laughs> and, of course, seeing that we're in the business of hunting ghosts, I'd say, yes, it's definitely a good thing. Mm. Words to trust there, Mr. Bannon. Our doctor here is the foremost expert in metaphysical science. What do you have for us this evening, Pet? Well, I've actually stumbled onto something of a breakthrough here, Wayne. <laughs> I've managed to actually expand the light spectrum visible to the human eye by refracting it through a specially vibrated glass prism. This cutting-edge technology actually allows us to see into the spirit world. Ah, yes! Let's get the ghost cam switched on! ...cathedral oscillating optoelectronics. Oh! <laughs> What was that for? Branching, oscillating, octahedral, optoelectronics. Oh, yes, exactly. That's what I said. <laughs> but of course, I do need a shorter name for that now, don't I? Boom! <laughs> please stop doing that. Yes, Mr. Banner, please do stop scaring poor Dr. Ahmed. Please continue, Doctor. Thank you, Mr. De Spirit Whistle. So, tonight, we will be utilising my standard surveillance kit, which, of course, includes night vision capabilities. Should we come into any problematic darkness, let's say? Oh, and additionally, I have taken the liberty of installing my branching up um, new devices all over the building. Tonight, we might actually be able to broadcast the image of a ghost for the very first time. Oh, exciting stuff, that. <laughs> And now, Patrick, your father built this place at the height of his illustrious career. That's right. The year was 1956. Hot off his success in music hall venues and comedy clubs around the country, Graham Bannon suddenly produces a TV script. A script that blows the mind of studio execs and leaves them scrappy who will get to make it. It was called Dying is Another Man's Job and starred Graham as a daring do-gooder, Percival Peril. It was set to be a tour de force for your father, launching into superstardom. Ah, but it was to be the start of something much more sinister. Three disasters struck, each more calamitous than the last. And shortly after the tragic events, that shortly after his very <sighs> Graham Bannon suddenly disappeared from the limelight, never to be seen in public again. It broke him. This place, the curse. My father had it all. Charm, talent, the weaselish good looks of a meerkat or some sort of stoked animal. But fate came in and cruelly stole it all away. Uh, built in 57, the Bannon sound stage was to be the home of a brand new televisual sensation of a scale never seen on our screens before. Oh, that damned woman. Ah! The spirit? Mm. Doomed to roam the wings and the halls forevermore. An unfortunate accident, a raging inferno, and a tragic loss of life. Left these walls cursed forever. Of course, production was shut down following Marie Murphy's mysterious passing. And since then, there have been misguided attempts to make use of this very building. None survived. What? Succeeded. None succeeded. Sorry, succeeded. Uh, we'll investigate those tales as we delve deep into the ruins of this once flourishing enterprise. <gasps> oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Who's there? A spirit? A spirit beckons. <gasps> we can test out the branching octahedral oscillating optoelectronics. Boom! Ah! Ah! So you see them as well? Ah, yes, no, I think, yes. She wants to give us a sign. No, I know it. Shh, everyone, shh. Any moment now, speak to me, love. 
Oh my! Oh my goodness! Oh. Are we getting this? Tell me we're getting this. My God. It looks like what a jellyfish would see on acid. She's showing us something. Some sort of light. Yes, right. The only place in this building with lots of light. Just stay. Exactly. Quickly. The departed are patient. The stage is the location of Brent Backflip's failed stunt where he plunged to the ground below. It is situated above the long sealed vault and the dark secrets he contains. This is where the cameras would roll, both figuratively and literally, at least until the installation of bricks. Yes, Captain, yes, this is where they wanted to bring us to stage, the scene of the accident. How are you feeling? I'll be honest, Wayne, I'm in shock. Well, it's quite overwhelming to stand where misfortune stood, isn't it? Oh, no, it's not that. Just... Look! The house that Bannon built. In this very room, a crew member. Brent Backflip. That's it, Brent Backflip fell during a stunt that went mysteriously wrong. Surely the spirits will lead us to the truth. Yeah, the truth is certainly vital to this process. Yes, I sense a lot of conflict. Hey, you can say that again, mate. Uh, a walking conflict based on the little uh, my father told me uh, he was a drinker. Yeah, alcohol? Mainly, yes. By all accounts, he played by his own rules. A criminal record as long as we are. Wow, that long? Yeah, that long. My father knew he was a wrong one, but he hired him anyway for his immaculate moustache and his impeccable pecs. A decision he stood firmly by. As I suspected. Conflict. The he is staring around us, Patrick. It's as if we've angered it. Is it? We are your servants, wispy ones. Lead us closer to the truth. Ah, do you hear that, Patrick? I, I, I can hear something, actually, yeah. It sounds to me like an old song, probably from the show itself. You're right, it's the theme tune to that show. He used to hum it all the time while he was reading and then burning all of his fan mail. Well, there's no time to lose. Let's go see what this spectral sign entails! The prop store was the lair of Cedric Sloan, master prop maker on Bannon's failed production. After Brent Backflip's accident, rumors concerning the prop dumbbells shone the cold, hard light of suspicion directly on the prop master. This would not be the first time a faulty or misused prop would lead to a hospital visit. The prop store. Vital to every production, and this one was no exception. Please do come in, Mr. Bannon. Does the name Cedric Sloan mean anything to you? Not really, should it? Well, perhaps. From what we could dig up, he was the prop master during the making of Dying is Another Man's Job. A very vital role, would you not agree, Mr. Bannon? Uh, I suppose so, yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Not only that, but he was a military man, dishonorably discharged, no family to talk of, no friends, just his work, and then the accident. Yes, yeah, so you're right, I remember now. So, something about him making a prop was too heavy and then that could have been the reason Brent failed or something. Ah, so you do remember, Mr. Bannon. Well, the stories surrounding Mr. Sloan are intriguing, to say the very least. We do know that there was no love lost between him and your father. From what we can tell, Cedric Sloan claimed that Mr. Bannon Sr. looked down on him at the rest of the crew, believing he was too good for them. Now, that kind of attitude breeds resentment. And if there's enough resentment, that can attract some very nasty spirits, Mr. Bannon. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not sure any of this is fair on my father. I think, by all accounts, he didn't even know that man existed. It's hard to look down on someone you don't even talk to. But wasn't it true? The props were your father's idea. He insisted the stuntman keep them on him during the climb, despite their encumbrance. I think 
think, I think we can all agree that the character of Percival Pell would have been a bit lesser if it hadn't been for his signature dumbbells. I challenge you, mate, to look heroic without performing a quick bicep curl. Signature indeed, or perhaps signing a potential death warrant, rather than creating the iconic story your father wanted. After all, with all these props lying around, there was ample opportunity for Cedric Sloan to exact his revenge, if that's what he wanted. Yeah, well, it was an accident. That's why everyone decided, didn't they? So. Ah, but was it the truth, Mr. Bannon? Nor is something more sinister that we're here. I think we need to dig a little deeper to find out. Out to get some help with that. Yes, spirits rise, rise. Yes, right, please, thank you. Where does our journey lead? Source. Did oh. you see that? She threw something at me. Must be like some sort of poltergeist. It's a tie. The spirit must be showing us where to go. Well, if they've designed anything to go by, it's a cry for help. Oh. Uh, come on, wait, what's the name of the spirits? Costume room was the place where poor Brent Backflip's failed harness costume was created. It was the home to the late costume designer Marie Murphy, one of the suspects in this insidious mystery. And, most terrifying of all, it contains dangerous amounts of noxious fabric. Of course, the old wardrobe department. This makes perfect sense. What do you mean? Well, it makes perfect sense that the dead girl would bring us to her workplace. Oh, the scene of the bloody crime, more like. Crime? You mean murder? Oh, willful endangerment by gross negligence, but still. Could this be Marie's final confession? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Angry woman accidentally hurts stupid man and then racked with guilt. Takes her own life. <laughs> yeah. It, well done, Patrick. It is our job as truth seekers to expose what really happened here. And now we know the origin of the accident. The case can begin to door. What the hell? What the hell? Did you get in that cabin? Look, look. Find another part of the Yes, spirits, what do you wish for us to see? Do you wish us to rid you of the shame of your deeds? That... that wasn't... Mm. Right. Hey, what do you make of that? Uh, looks like a bit of paperwork from Bannon Productions. Uh, invoices, receipts... Uh, but look here, we've got, got a cancelled purchase order um, from, a, from, from a high-grade nylon polymer. Um, and instead, they placed an order from Cut Price Keith's Cut Price Clots. And the letter. No. Here, Marie, regard your correspondence at the fourth. How often your budget is slashed and why is none of your concern? Nor is it your place to make safety recommendations. I kindly stop squawking and do your goddamn job. Do not force me to seriously regret keeping you on yours no longer. Graham T. Bannon. Let me see that. Let's get back to Dr. Ahmed. We can regroup before we start to investigate the fire that ravaged this place. While we do that, we'll show you some never-before-seen documentary footage. Yes, yeah, so it was originally ordered cancelled out of respect and um, was partly damaged in the big fire. That's right. Stand by to hit the we'll play button. Uh, hang on. Have you fixed that tape? I'm your host, Harold Repartee, and this is the nation's Nightfall Report. Tonight we bring you a special program where we take a closer look behind the scenes of a forthcoming television sensation. Masterminded by Graham Bannon, seen here at the Chesterton Casino, the project is, as yet untitled, promises to revolutionize entertainment. 
Bannon has just completed construction on this state-of-the-art studio and production facility. And despite his apparent fortune, Bannon decided to seek outside investment for this extravagant expenditure. With a price tag into the millions, it's a move that has raised eyebrows across the business world. Rehearsals are now well underway here, and it seems Bannon is quite the taskmaster. However, there have been suggestions that things are not as they seem. With Bannon decrying claims that his vast gambling debts have left him on the brink of bankruptcy as tabloid dross. It's certainly unexpected for a family variety act to be catapulted so quickly into the spotlight. But if the executives queuing around the block or anything to go by, these new scripts of his must be really something special. Welcome back to Live and Spooky, where we've just had a breakthrough. That's right. If you're just joining us, in part one, we actually, through communicating with the spirits themselves, <clears throat> solved the mystery of Brent Batflip's devastating accident. Yeah, libel, slander, defamation, pick one, delete as appropriate. Uh, Graham Bannon's miserly negligence. In part two, we are joined by... Holly. Holly. Yes. Holly. She has the sight. She will be a spiritual guide to us all in the end, I feel. And we will gladly follow wherever she leads us. Our next mystery is the fire that wrapped the building shortly before production was halted. Nothing could be proven at the time, but it was widely believed to be the fault of the costume girl, Marie Murphy. Before charges could be drawn up, the poor woman took her own life on these very premises. And while the fire seemed to originate from the projection room, as of yet, we've been unable to gain access to the room itself. Unfortunately, our good-for-nothing cameraman Gavin has gone for the world's longest slash, so we'll be going handheld for this one. Oh, yes, Alex, if you don't calibrate the spirit jump correctly by the time that bar fills up, Garrison, the polarity will become misaligned, and it'll take a while for it to restabilise and get back up and running again. The dead can be volatile, he can be violent. If you find yourself in trouble, simply exude a strong need for assistance of my attuned senses. Or bring me running quick as you like. All right. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> Off you. Hello? 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 Spooky ghost echo. You know, I don't actually remember agreeing to specifically wander around in the dark on my own. What is that? It's a light. It's a light switch. So. Uh, OK. I seem to be in a sort of, as you can see this, in a sort of uh, uh, lighting thing now. Can't much longer, can it? I've got... There's, um... Can you see this? Oh, God. Hello? So no, you, 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 you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't go towards the light, do you? You, uh, you don't, you, you, you don't go towards the light, that's probably not what we wanted to do anyway, so... Okay. <sighs> Looks like maybe part of the set. Or the sound stage, whatever you want to call it. Okay, you can't even see it, it's like pitch black. Um, I don't think I'm very good at this. Sacrifice one. 
or I'll take the last. Graham Bannon's last show, but the name's been crossed out. Oh, 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 oh. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> time, time to go, is it? <laughs> okay. Um, I wouldn't want to overstay my welcome. I'm just gonna. Uh, <laughs> slightly problematic. Hello. Um, to any spirits that are out there, I'd be more than happy to leave if you.
be on the verge of finding Oh, that bloody thing's broke. Not this new idiot's gone completely off script. Diane, Diane, I've heard from you in a while. Diane, what the fuck is Diane? I need more info on this Holly. She got a dead dad or what? What's my angle? Diane. Sake. You're a liar! Get your voice down, are you causing a scene? No! This is not what we agreed, Gray. This, this arrangement is better for us both. Is it? Because I fail to see how I'm better off. I'm doing you a fucking favour. You should be paying me for an opportunity like this. Pay me for an That's money. You want more money? I don't care about money. I want what I deserve, Graham. Exactly. I'll tell them. And who'll believe you? Seriously, who will believe you, Marie? You're a woman! I am. I am. But at least I'm not a fraud. You won't last long, won't you, Marie? your ears, eyes, mouth, nose, or any other orifice, you'll be fine. Okay, Dr. Fingersmith. I will not touch my eyes. Okay, it's gone. It's gone. Oh my god, what happened to this place? Someone's nearly had an accident here. Bits of film. All the original scripts. All completely burnt. They never did work out how it started. Hold on. I recognise that smell. I yeah. Smell. Still as pungent as ever. Dad did say it's pungent. It was on the questionable side of legal. Still, it reminds me of home. So, so it was deliberate. So, so. I know nothing could survive that fire, definitely. Could survive that fire, definitely. Oh, it's really interesting. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is that? The projector. Who lays an old projector lying around in the projector in the projector room? Right, I'm in the projector room. Fine. Oh, for God's sake. Great. So I'm gonna die here in the projector room. While everyone else is dying, God knows where. Oh, why did I agree to this stupid fucking Wait, does that Does that say? Jet set. 
galaxy across the globe. The cosmetic aisle. The salmon industry. You know it. It's Bannon Brown. Petroleum. It burns smooth and it burns hard. Other brands have gotten away with poor quality products. Until now. It's so good, I put my banner name on it. How could you go anywhere else? You couldn't. Not without Bannon Brand. Petroleum. It's all natural. It's all performance. It's all yours. And that's a Bannon promise you can trust. In fact, you can drive it all the way to the bank. Okay. 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 I should do it. I should stop anything coming through. Unless there's a ghost, then I'll probably just float through. There's not much I can do about that. Okay. This could well be the last message from Patrick Bannon, television broadcaster. I stupidly agreed to do a show where I pretend ghosts exist for money. Turns out they do. And one has been chasing me around all evening, an evil ghost woman. Wrote my name on the wall and everything. <laughs> my final wish is that that bastard charlatan Wayne is shown to be the prickiest. <laughs> oh hearing this but I think I'm beneath the stage. Looks like Bannon was hiding stuff down here. Bannon was hiding stuff down here. Explain why he sealed the door off. Destroyed it. He destroyed it. And thanks to him, history remembers you as the costume girl who ruined everything. move quite quietly, don't I? My limbs are particularly aerodynamic. I thought you were dead. Uh, no, 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 not, not, not dead. Uh, so Diane found me upstairs, hide a cow, uh, I was upstairs, and she came to find me, and then I thought I'd come find you. Be careful with that, it's really important. Marie, the spirit, whatever, she wants us to see it, and I think if we play it, nobody else is going to get hurt. You're right. What? Well, you're talking a lot of nonsense about spirits and uh, ghosts, and don't forget it's not real. What, what do you mean? You saw no, 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 I didn't. It's a TV show. Remember, people press buttons, things jump out. Ah! No, bullshit. What are you saying? We need that tape, and we need. It's to... been a stressful night, right? What your scalp says happened to breakfast. Give me the tape, Patrick. Dan's called an ambulance. So should be here any minute. To check your out. Give me the tape, Patrick. Why? 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 You knew. You knew about this place. Hmm? Which means you know what's on that tape. Oh, right, maybe I do know what's on this tape. 
And maybe that's exactly why this cannot get into the wrong hands, Holly. Patrick, I knew you were an arsehole, but I didn't think... What? You didn't think what? Patrick, we need that tape or she will kill us all. Do you know how hard it is, Holly, being a bad Living under my father's expectations, his ambition. And then one day, this fucking curse. Marie Murphy died here, Patrick. Yeah, do you know who else died here? Died here a little boy. A little boy whose father never came home. He shut himself away, never looked at us again. He wanted his whiskey every night with exactly one ounce of ice. So he could sit on his own and enjoy it with the only thing he still had eyes for. TV. I'm sorry, Patrick. I am. You didn't deserve that. But neither did Marie. He, he wouldn't have done something like that, Holly. Why do you care so much when he never cared for anyone in his life? Not for you and certainly not for Marie. Because I need it. Because his reputation is its all I've got, Holly. Patrick. You were an average broadcaster. You've always been an average broadcaster. You swear at the guests, you forget your lines, you treat everyone around you as if they're shit people from the planet shit, yet you are still better than him. You're a better presenter, somehow, and you're a better man. Trust me, his name is not doing you any favors. So give me the tape, Patrick. So give me the tape, Patrick. I, I can't, I can't, I'll, I'll risk losing everything. Person, an even shittier news broadcaster. And no matter of mustache is ever going to make him proud of you. Finally, I quit, by the way. Just because your dad was a cut doesn't mean you have to be. Fuck you, I. Why are you the party? Ah. Don't worry, Holly. Look at the one again. Don't put me on the spot, don't put me on the spot, Des! Don't put me on the spot, Des! Percy, I can't believe you came. I only came to say goodbye. Goodbye? That's what I said, ain't it? What about your manuscript? I couldn't have done it without you. Do you really mean that? You call me a liar, kid. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. Well, I guess this is it. Must I go? This is the way it has to be. But remember, I'll never forget you, Mary. Do you promise? Trust my heart and hope to die. And dying is another man's job.
Tonight on Channel One, I'm going to be grouting with pop star Skinny. And I'm going to be showing Arthur and Katie from the...